Oh, dear Canadians, get ready for the new Canadian world order. And it is a Canadian world order because we have changed. Canada has changed in the last couple of decades. It wasn't just Stephen Harper that changed us. I mean, think back to Brian the Cash Mulrooney, who would show up in hotel rooms. Now, think about it again, folks. Don't ever forget this. He was the Prime Minister of Canada, a lawyer. A lawyer by trade, gone through university, learned the law, and he went to off to uh, hotel rooms to collect envelopes full of cash. Then he lied about it. And what was the punishment that he got out of it? At a time when Stephen Harper and the conservatives talk about law and order and building prisons to house all these criminals of Canada, what did Brian Mulrooney get out of it? But it's not just Brian Mulrooney. It's not just the conservatives. We got John Chrétien, who got elected the first time because he was going to do away with the GST. He was up on the stage, you know, beating his chest, flapping this little book around. He's going to do away with it. He got elected and he pretty well forgot all about that. But John Turner, Prime Minister of Canada, who kept his family's holdings in the Caribbean to avoid paying taxes, the same thing that you and I and every other law-abiding Canadian has to do every single year, or you're going to have Revenue Canada coming down your throat. We've seen reports on the news how they go after the little guys. It's absolutely sickening. And this new world order has bred a culture of corruption. It starts at the very top in Canada. And that's at the Prime Minister's office. Prime Minister Stephen Harper has prorogued Parliament. He's brought in bills with no debate. I mean, you could go down the whole list of things that he should have been indicted for, recalled, which we can't do in Canada. And always he's used the Hogan's Hero Schultz defense. I know nothing. I know nothing. Everyone knows he's a micromanager. You wouldn't dare do anything in the Harper regime without it being clear. Not the slightest thing. It's not about some little guy doing something uh, out of his desire to please the master. If you wanted to please the master, you didn't do anything without him knowing it. But this culture of corruption, this new world order for Canada is all over. Rob Ford, Toronto mayor. Toronto is Canada's largest city. And there is a crack-smoking, drunken, fun-loving mayor in Toronto. Alison Redford, premier of what arguably is Canada's moneymaker, Alberta, oil, tar sands. She was living like she's queen of the province. Flying on private planes, wanting a new penthouse built for her. And even though she's gotten into trouble for her trip to South Africa... I remember reading about what it costs to Albertan taxpayers for Alberta's premier and her entourage and chef to go to the London Olympics. That was some half a million dollars. But she's not alone in this, folks. Look at how many mayors have resigned recently. Ontario... Montreal, I mean, Montreal at one time had four mayors in 12 months, all because of corruption. I remember hearing about it on the news that there there was a safe in the mayor's office that was so stuffed full of cash that they had to build a larger safe. This is the new world order you live on. And at the time when Harper talks about, you know, building a new prison and law and order, who is he aiming this at? Is it aiming at at the elite, at the wealthy, or is it being aimed at people caught in penny anti-crime? Canada has really changed. And again, this morning, for me, the change was hammered home because a week ago today, it came out from Statistics Canada that Canada, in July of 2014, created 200 jobs. Now, we have a federal conservative government that is building everything on jobs and economy. Jobs, jobs, jobs. They're creating jobs. And how does it look to a government who is going to be facing an election in 2015 that there were only 200 jobs created in July 2014, predominantly part-time jobs? It doesn't look very good. So, as if by magic, Statistics Canada 
came out today with revised numbers. Now, the private sector economists thought that Canada should create 20,000 jobs. The statistics last week were that we created 200 jobs. Well, today it's been revised. We created a whopping 42,000 jobs in July, double what the private economists had anticipated. What amazing news. I mean, even the Canadian dollar rallied today on this fantastic news. And I'm sure it put Stephen Harper and the Conservatives into a good mood to know that they can go to the next election with all their fraudulent numbers, which they they can fudge to create whatever they want. And uh, how can people trust not only the government, but our government agencies anything like that we can't trust the banks they lie and cheat we can't just trust the big uh telecommunication companies we can't trust the government who the hell are we supposed to trust